hello everyone and good morning to you all uh, it gives me immense pleasure to have you all in this commencement lecture and uh, to start this i would uh, like to invite our founding vice chancellor professor dr c rajkumar to give us the welcome address uh, vc sir please all right uh, well a very good morning to all of you um, it's such a pleasure to see all of you here um, you know i must say that uh, first of all congratulations to all the students who have been admitted to the jindal school of art and architecture um, it's a very special moment for all of you particularly the high school students who have been admitted to the jsa because you are part of a generation of students around the world who have joined and transitioned from high school education to university education without actually moving into a physical campus you are starting your academic year uh, in a very difficult uh, time when the world is facing this global pandemic but i can only appreciate the extraordinary resilience that you have already shown and uh, the fact that you completed your 12th standard examination and did not even take a break you withstood the challenges of the pandemic and now you are moving into a university to pursue your undergraduate education so you have already covered huge ground uh, to demonstrate your leadership your resilience and all of that and we are very fortunate that we have with us uh, mr sanjay mohe who is the founder and partner of mind space who has uh, kindly given us time to be present here and to deliver the commencement lecture now the commencement lecture is a very important part of the tradition that we have established at topi jindal global university uh, i as vice chancellor this year i am uh, briefly attending 14 commencement lectures and so i will be moving from one to the other but uh, it's a very special moment because i want to welcome all of you uh, particularly the students of the jindal school of art and architecture normally we would have done it on campus but i'm going to do the closest i can do i'm going to quickly show you how the campus looks this is what the campus view from my office here at jgu you can see the sprawling grounds of the campus and at distance you see the tennis courts and we have a beautiful cricket field and a football ground and those sites are the housing facilities that hopefully you will occupy so this is what we have and uh, we are waiting for you uh, i mean you know the raison d'etre of an institution is the students uh, the soul of the university is missing without you so uh, we look forward to seeing you soon on campus as and when it is possible for us to bring you all here let me also say that the jindal school of art and architecture is a unique institution at our university uh, we are as some of you know have grown as a, as a part of an effort to build a world class university with strong focus on liberal arts humanities and social sciences we have never had and do not probably intend to in the near future core stem disciplines or for that matter a medical school so the jindal school of art and architecture is the closest we have gone uh, to imbibe certain aspects of engineering and technology in the broader imagination of uh, uh, you know education that we have so briefly op jindal global university was founded as a philanthropic initiative of our founding chancellor and benefactor mr navin jindal uh, the vision of the university was always and has been to promote uh, global education of the highest standards bringing in the best of minds from india and around the world i also want to mention that this year is very special uh, besides the fact that we are welcoming uh, the new batch of the jindal school of art and architect architecture this academic year has been quite phenomenal for jgu right at the beginning of this academic year in august 2019 the previous one we were declared as an institution of eminence as some of you know uh, it's a very important public policy initiative of the government of india uh near yeah, this was part of an effort to build world class universities in india and uh, after a very elaborate process which lasted for over 2 years only 10 public and 8 private universities were declared as an institution of eminence and we were 
uh, one such institution. That was in August 2019. Uh, progressively, uh, this last year, uh, just before uh, the beginning of the, um, the corona crisis in India, at least in March 2020, our law school was declared as India's number one law school. And a few weeks later, uh, the QS World University Rankings 2021 declared OP Jindal Global University as India's number one private university. And uh, also a week later, uh, the QS World University Rankings among the young universities less than 50 years of age, we were ranked top 150 in the world. I say this because of the fact that uh, this university has been in a relatively short span of time uh, redefined the character of Indian ed higher education in numerous ways. And that has been possible because of the extraordinary contribution of our faculty members, of course, our staff, and indeed the students. Uh, now, some of who have become, some of whom have become senior students at the Jindal School of Art and Architecture. I also want to particularly welcome the current batch of the students of uh, the Jindal School of Art and Architecture also because of the fact that you have an opportunity to redefine uh, spaces uh, as particularly the context of India's aspiration to fulfill the sustainable development goals. Uh, issues of sustainability as well as architecture are increasingly forming the center stage when it comes to determining the future of architecture studies. Uh, we are very fortunate that an outstanding group of faculty members led by an inspiring Dean Thomas Mikkel and an equally inspiring Vice Dean Professor Jaydeep Chatterjee have not only led the academic and intellectual imagination of the Jindal School of Art and Architecture, but have brought to the some of the finest minds who come from different disciplines, who appreciate and are deeply committed to the ethos and values of the Jindal Global University and are also advancing the cause of architecture studies within JSA. Another remarkable thing about uh, OP Jindal Global University, which you will discover, is that as you move in your own uh, higher education uh, trajectory, you will also discover that the university is interdisciplinary. One of the things about uh, JSA, unlike a standalone architecture school, whose names I will not mention, is that we are part of a larger university imagination. The JSAA students, like any other student of JGU, can take courses in the law school, in the business school, in the school of international affairs, in the school of public policy, in the school of liberal arts, in the school of journalism, and in the school of environment and sustainability. We are a multidisciplinary and interdisciplinary university with opportunities for every student, including the students of JSA to be able to cross register courses in the other schools. In terms of physical spaces, uh, there I will say this, that the Jindal School of Art and Architecture is a spoiled lot. It is the only school in JGU which has undermined my own aspiration to have completely interdisciplinary spaces with no exclusive building or no exclusive space. But Thomas Mikal and Jaydeep and the faculty um, have been hard negotiators and have created their own spaces. And of course, the students of JSA have been enjoying that space and you will all experience that space. Uh, so in some ways, recognizing the fact that uh, architecture requires a different type of imagination, including uh, separated studios and all of that, we have created a beautiful space for the JSA students. And, uh, but that does not mean that the students of JSA do not have access to any other part of the university. As you will see when you visit our campus, uh, we do not have any space exclusively devoted for our schools, including the largest school within the university, the Jindal Global Law School. Uh, I also want to mention that as you think about the future of your own studies at JSA and at JGU, I hope you will go beyond the frontiers of knowledge and expertise and skills that the JSA alone provides. I would like you to take courses in the other schools, uh, engage with students and faculty from other schools, experience the opportunity that <clears throat> being part of a larger environment and ecosystem that we have created within JGU. 
I also want to mention that uh, the future is going to be met with numerous challenges when it comes to architecture itself. Increasingly, we are facing some of the most fundamental challenges caused due to issues surrounding climate change, but also air pollution and other such uh, aspects. Uh, we are also going to be facing a crisis with regard to housing uh, and also our cities and the future. So in some ways, the new age architect is somebody who is able to marry the discipline of architecture with, with aesthetics, should be able to marry the discipline of architecture with sociology and anthropology and history and political science and economics and law. Uh, that is what the future architect is going to be. And hence, uh, it does not make sense for you to study in a standalone architecture school uh, without naming anybody. Uh, it is important for you to be part of an institutional ecosystem which is inherently dynamic and interdisciplinary, where you have opportunities on a day-to-day -day basis to interact with students and faculty from other disciplines and to have access to those people right there. And that is why the possibility of achieving your fullest potential within the larger context of a university exists uh, in a general school of art and architecture. I also want to mention that this is also a time when we need to question some of the more, let's say, fundamental beliefs that we might have had about the way spaces need to be created and spaces need to be, let's say, uh, improved. Uh, all of that is going to be defined by the future students and graduates of institutions such as the Jindal School of Art and Architecture. I've had the privilege to interact with our, uh, the previous batch of JSA students. They are clearly one of the finest lot within the campus. Uh, they are far more uh, engaged with the university community than uh, probably students from some other schools that also comes with the terrain of uh, studying architecture in, a, in, a, in an environment in which you have eclectic faculty members who also come from a range of disciplines. So I am particularly excited that uh, you have all joined the Jindal School of Art and Architecture. As the Vice Chancellor of the University, I look forward to welcoming you on campus sooner than later. Uh, but in the meantime, we will leave no stone unturned. And that's another part of what I want to say is that we will continuously working, be working hard to make sure that the education that we are going to have for, let's say, for a while till such time, we will all be in a position to feel safe about what we are facing. That particular form of education, we will be constantly working towards making it what I have called having greater freedom to the faculty, constantly having innovation, have flexibility and adaptability so that we are able to overcome this crisis and the continuity in education is not in any way hampered as we look at the future. With those words, once again, I would like to congratulate the students who have joined the Jindal School of Art and Architecture, welcome our distinguished commencement spe speaker, and also thank all the faculty members, the Dean and the Vice Dean to be part of this institutional imagination. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for your, for your words and wisdom and for familiarizing the audience with the achievements of Jindal Global University and also what Jindal School of Art and Architecture stands for and how it was sort of, you know, it came into existence. Uh, and also for acquainting the new students with the feel of the campus. I think it reminds us also the faculty of, you know, what we've been missing. Uh, now I would like to invite our Dean, Professor Dr. Thomas Michael, uh, who's the Dean of Jindal School of Art and Architecture to give an introduction about the Jindal School of Architecture. Uh, thank you, Abu, and uh, thank you, Raj, for that uh, sweeping uh, description of the work ahead of us in architecture. Um, I'm just going to add a few comments to that because I think um, the important thing to think about is uh, commencements are a time for beginnings. It's a time to reframe. It's a time to rethink. And particularly this year, it's perhaps even more exaggerated because of our uh, isolation and that fragile connectivity that we have under the uh, current circumstances. Um, and some of this uh, epic daydreaming that might be possible is likely going to be focused on those areas that architecture can contribute to um, wider social value creation. 
Uh, we've mentioned already uh, sustainability and ecologies and the need to use that expertise, which ranges across the university and across the globe. Um, there's a strong notion in our school too, with many of the students and faculty around issues of social justice and equity, which is a strength that uh, hopefully a lot of students coming into the school will appreciate and participate in. I think there's also the obligation for architects to always remember that uh, architecture is not real estate, that we have an ethical obligation to a variety of stakeholders, including the uh, users who haven't come or arrived in the world yet. And I think one of the fundamental challenges for architecture education or any of the professions and, and creative industries is to always be asking what is missing? What is missing from this current situation? What is it that we could be adding? What can we change? What can we modify? Because you find of all the values, and I've told this to some of the incoming students, of all the values that we would uh, cherish the most for incoming students, curiosity would have to be the dominant. If you have curiosity, then you can ask questions. If you have questions, then you're open to learning. And the dirty secret of education is we want to make you as smart as we are or smarter so that you don't need any more education. You can figure out things for yourself. And we only borrow your brains for about three to five years to do that. So it's a tall order. And we have an ethical obligation to make sure that you can think clearly and succinctly and think in the broadest possible scales and place yourself in future environments and bring the rest of the world there with you. Okay. And with that, I'll hand off back to Abdul. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Thomas, uh, for sort of drawing a picture of our school and for shedding light on you know what we do. Uh, uh, moving on, I would now like to invite architect Sanjay Mohe, our guest, to deliver the commencement lecture. Uh, but before that, you know, allow me to introduce him. Sanjay Mohe is the founding partner of Mindspace. Mindspace was formed in October 2004 by Sanjay Mohe, Vasuki Prakash, and Surinara. Uh, Sanjay Mohe is a contemporary architect. He was born and brought up in Mumbai. He graduated in architecture from Sir JJ College of Architecture in 1976 and went on to work with the likes of architect Charles Kuria. Mr. Mohe's philosophy is very simple. He believes in light as a building material, in respecting the five senses and working with the five elements. He argues that architecture is about search of souls and not about cosmetics. It is about participating, understanding and working with nature. So design for him is about stories yet unimagined and thoughts yet to be reproduced and fresh encounters and good vibes. Uh, Mr. Mohe and his firm have won several national and international design competitions. Among these are the Golden Architect Award by A plus D and Spectrum Foundation, uh, the A plus D and Spectrum Foundation Architecture Award, the JK Cement Architect of the Year Award, and the International Annual Award of Architectural Review London. Gold medal from Arcasia, which is the Asian Forum for Institutes of Architecture. Most recently in 2019, he was awarded with JK Great Masters Award for Lifetime Achievement. Uh, personally, I also have learned a lot from his architecture through you know, some of the videos that are available on the YouTube and also through some of the buildings that I went to. The Architecture School of PIT being one of the examples. So thank you, sir. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, over to you. Thank you so much, Abu. And uh, thanks, uh, Professor Rajkumar, for uh, showing us your wonderful campus. Uh, congratulations to all the young students who have joined uh, the college and wishing all of you all the very best. Um, I'll, I'll start sharing the screen. Uh, students and participants, I would just like to uh, say one thing that if you have any questions or doubts you want to ask, you know, architect Sanjay, then you can just type in that in the chat box and we will take it up after the lecture. Um, can you see the presentation? Is it clear? Yes, we can. Yes, it is clear. Oh, can. Okay. So uh, the first day of the school, and uh, that's that's the most exciting thing. Um, it's exciting for everyone because new environment. Though you are sitting in uh, uh, in, in your place now, these are strange situations, but. Hopefully soon you will join the campus and um, already saw the glimpses of it. Um, 
it's a wonderful place so new environment new teachers new subjects new friends and it's the most exciting thing to interact with uh, with everyone and learn so much even for me even today i remember my first day of the college and um, that's something because you value it so much and those whatever years you spend during that college they stay with you all the time and they those five years they look like a very long time you know because you are learning something every day and that becomes like a like a bank of knowledge for you which you can you can rely on and you keep referring to it all the time and that's the reason it feels like a very very long time um actually joining architecture you have done something which is wonderful because uh, um this is one thing where you get paid for doing creative work and this is something which is such a enjoyable thing that you do something something creative which you look forward to you enjoy that process and in the process you get paid for it which is uh, which is a great thing and uh, you know it's about um, why mahatma gandhi was called as a architect of india and you know that's because it's his ability to think in future and what you as as architects or students of architect are going to do is to learn how to look at a future and that's 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 a great ability which you are going to learn in along with your teachers in this campus in probably in next 5 years and that that's going to stay with you it's about looking at the surroundings from different eye level you know from different perspective so you will you will learn how to look at things from different level it it has to elevate the thing and think about the future think think about the larger things but it's not only the larger things it's about curiosity and looking at small details as well so you have to be like a child and ask questions and those things are very important about asking questions and this is something which um which are the fundamental things of learning how you really question and then to me um nature is probably the best way of learning things and every every product of nature has evolved over millions of years and it has perfected and if if you have to learn design if you have to learn the process of design thinking you should learn how to analyze every object of nature so for example you take a example of a fish and why this shape has evolved why that cross section what you see here why it is so thin and long why the surface is so smooth and it has to negotiate through water so it has to have a very slim cross section it has to have a sharp pointed edge so that it can maneuver through the water and then this has to guide so it has to be supple so these are the final logics but nature doesn't stop by evolving this perfect form it goes ahead and starts adding colors into it starts developing different forms this is what we have to learn through it be logical but go beyond that and create aesthetics out of it now another example is uh, you know if you take of any look at any animal um if this if he has to eat something first the the process is first you see what is what is something there to eat then you smell whether it is edible and then you eat and that's the reason you have eyes nose and then the mouth so you first see then smell and then eat and for eating you have to bend down so you have a neck but then you look at a look at elephant what happens in the case of elephant it has a trunk which is a nose it's not a mouth so it it takes the trunk to smell and 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 picks up the food and put it in the mouth and then the neck disappears so that's the way the design sort of evolves and that's why whatever you know idea of beauty it might be you have the sequence of eyes first then nose then mouth and then you have these eyebrows to protect this uh, eyes from the water and that's how and finally you create a beauty mask or whatever the so aesthetic evolves later first you have to look at a functionality first you have to understand the reason for every product to be every element to be why it is there and then you go beyond that so this is a process of learning unlearning and relearning because we from the childhood view begin to sort of 
take things for granted. Uh, there are a lot of things you just take it for granted without questioning. So this is the time to sort of question. And I still remember uh, one of that first, first week in my college in JJ. And one of the professors had asked us this question, which I keep giving this example to every student because it's very important. Uh, we were asked to define a table. And then we started saying that, okay, the table with legs and wood, wooden surface and all that. And this professor kept asking us question, why four legs? Why not, uh, why not two? Why not three? Why not one? Why, why wood? Can it, can't it be steel? Can't it be glass? Can't it? So finally, what we sort of, after defining that process of defining went on for every student giving answers. And finally, we realized that why, what we need is a surface at an appropriate level. So then whether you cantilever it out or you suspend it or you inflate it or you, uh, you know, excavate it and do something, you have so many possibilities. So once you understand the reason, once you understand the logic beyond the form, you, you, can, you will have so many possibilities available to you and you should do it for everything. Table is just one example that I am giving. So the process of designing would be to first to sort of unlearn certain things and then relearn them. Now, architecture is about the left brain and right brains. It's about logic and creativity both. So um, one of the things I would always tell you that we have this amazing power of imagine, imagination, each one of us. And, um, and, and the best example of that is if you see a movie, if, if you read a book, you read a novel, and if you watch a movie based on that no novel, you will never be happy about it because what you would have imagined would be much, much more than what you see in that movie. So it's about ability to imagine with each one of us is absolutely enormous. Now, what you would learn in this college during next few years is to convert that imagination into reality. And that's our job. Now, it's not easy. That's probably the most difficult thing. It's easier to imagine, but to convert that imagination into reality and give dimensions to it, make it, you know, that's something which is immeasurable. You have to make it measurable. And then you have to actually construct it and allow people to use it. And after experiencing it, it again becomes immeasurable. And so that's the reason you need your left brain, which is a logical one. There you have to analyze, you have to understand uh, the logic behind it, the order behind it, the mathemat, the technology behind it. So it's a combination of left brain and right brain. Now, the climate plays a huge role on each one of us because the climate would have actually, um, you know, for generations, it's something which is, which is constant. Um, and most of our rituals, customs, and all are based on the climate, and that's something which each all of us have to re to remember. And and why do we why do we re remove our shoes before we enter the house? Because we can we used to sit on the floor and dine. And why we we sat on the floor and 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 dine because our floors allowed us to sit on sit on the ground. It's not like a Western country where the temperature goes to minus 10 degrees and the floors are so cold that they couldn't sit on it. And that's why the chair was involved as an insulation from the cold floor. So we, we, because we had this ability to do that, the climate allowed us to do that. But slowly we um, you know, followed that chair, that chair came into our life. But before that chair came into our life, we sat on the floor and all our windows started from the floor because we wanted the breeze to come onto the body. So now you find all these uh, sill level with one meter sill level and all and the windows starting not touching the floor. All that is, is a phenomenon after we accepted chair in our life. So you have to question these things and try to understand. Um, you know, shelter is, architecture is called as shelter, but the first layer of shelter is a clothing and the second layer of shelter is a house. So the first layer is something which is a tradi traditional clothing, again, which has evolved over so many years. And that typically is as a response to the climate. So when you see in Rajasthan, you will see this large turban on the head, and that's like an insulation. And that's why you find these houses in Rajasthan with large insulating layer on the top. 
Now you see in Kerala where, where, where it is, uh, you know, a hot, humid climate, there you need to have breeze onto your body. So the dress becomes quite different, much more uh, lesser. And that's how the verandas are, you know, it's a very less beta area and you will see people sitting in the veranda and the breeze flowing onto body. So there is a strong relationship between between the built and the, you know, the way you dress. And that's why I said that five elements of nature, uh, panchabhuta is what you call them. And those are the ones which, um, which you have to really understand how to bring light into the space. And by bringing that light, you are really creating touching emotions and creating so much of play of light, uh, you know, and it's it's like a drama which keeps happening from morning to evening you know, and the, the whole space keeps changing otherwise architecture which is very static you know becomes dynamic because of uh, because of the quality of light that you see and then there is a mathematics to it again so this is a measurable thing you know exactly uh, you know on uh, if i have to really look at it on September 1st what should be the angle of the light at this time at about 11:30 I would exactly know, you know, and it's a measurable thing. So you will learn to have, use these diagrams, softwares to understand the movement of the thing. And these are some of the examples where, you know, these are the renders where we had rendered it at the April 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, and the same same time how the building after it was over, how it was. And so it it's exactly follows the same, uh, you know, direction. So it's fun learning that you're going to learn all these things and you would enjoy doing that. It's not something which is, um, the, the next thing is about water, you know, and all of you know the value of water, every drop of water, how you conserve it, how you uh, create, uh, you know, um, uh, use it for the future and create aesthetics out of it, create uh, uh, it you use it for humidifying the building and things like that so again it is measurable you you have and then there is the wind which is you know you have these famous wind catchers and these are the modern wind catchers so so it's about again analyzing the wind direction and all this is something again it's um, it's fun learning all those things but um, one of the things is about the earth and the, how the how the water flows, how the flora and fauna develops, and and this is one example. I'll quickly show you. This is one of the sites in Hyderabad which we were doing with a lot of these rocks and all. And on the site, I had drawn this sketch. Uh, how though this is barren, you imagine it to be lot, with a lot of trees and uh, you know water bodies and that section. And this is how it started. Hardly any trees there. It's almost barren. We started planting this. And over the time, within five years, you know, these trees grew, these rocks were absorbed with all these things, and you'll find so many bird nests and all. And see the rock, barren rocks, which were kind of connected. So the, what you had sketched in the beginning, it started looking like that over the period of about five years. And this is what you have to uh, understand to create space for nature and then nature will take over and respect the nature work with nature you know try to study nature and again these five senses and those are became these become very very important and every religion has worked on this element of five senses so you you look at any religion there will be idea of you know fragrance there will be idea of sound there is uh, uh, so so you you would you would see the you would you would hear the sound you will see the lamp uh, the uh, the glory of that and then a fragrance and then you see the feel the breeze on the body so so all all the elements and that's what really probably brings you closer to god i mean that probably is the idea uh, it's about um, caring Caring, the, caring about the planet. I mean, uh, we talk about um, sustainability, that word you will keep hearing in the next few years continuously, you'll be hearing about uh, sustainability. And sustainability is about respecting all these forces of nature, uh, you know, uh, doing judicious use of every, every element uh, without spoiling the globe. So it's about taking care. It's about taking care of the people, taking care of the planet, taking care of the resources, taking care of technology. 
trying to put it all together and then work with uh, so so what what your place of learning would be it's about uh, about encouraging creativity you know trying to think big but the creativity is difficult to be taught you have to also learn it along with the teachers the teachers will help you to uh, to learn creativity but it is it is something from from within so typically it would happen in two different ways one is a planned interaction which would happen in studios and lecture halls but it also happens in chance areas so i'll just quickly show you that you know these would be the studios but it's you will you will learn it together with the teachers with your friends and through discussions and it becomes extremely important process of discussing and learning and challenging and you would actually do it learn it by doing things and that it's a very very important aspect of the doing it at the smaller scale doing doing it at a bigger scale or even bigger scale but unless you do it you feel it you will sometimes you will make mistakes you will fail but unless unless it fails you won't even know how to strengthen it and how to you know take it forward so it's important to do that and uh, so you would have to learn to communicate that again is a very very important part of architecture education so there would be juries where you would learn to communicate because once you come out into the profession you have to be able to to defend your ideas you have to really fight for your ideas and that becomes a very very important so you would learn in along with your teachers how to defend your ideas um, and how to take it forward so it could be on a smaller scale and it's very important to listen and observe um, and that is very very important part of your education so the exhibitions become very important informal learning also becomes extremely important so whether you might be sitting so you your life should become architecture it's not only when you are in school in the studio you wherever you are you should be thinking about about i mean and that there are ideas lying all around so you might be sitting with your teacher in a canteen and discussing your design and that's what is probably that's where you might get probably the most brilliant ideas so so these kind of situations become extremely important uh you will learn how to coordinate things because architecture is very different from being a painter or artist because when you are a painter you you would paint something and you are not bothered whether somebody likes it or not or even probably for a musician he would he could play for himself but architecture is not like that you are doing it for others and there it's a team work you can't do it by yourself you can create ideas but to execute those ideas or to sort of evolve those ideas you need a great engineer to work with you need a great client first of all we who would allow you to to develop those ideas uh, and agree to your ideas and then you will have set of engineers uh, from civil to electrical to mechanical to acoustics to air conditioning so you have to work with them together and and fit in all these uh, pieces together to to create something great um and then finally it comes to the builder who would translate your ideas and build it on the site and that becomes a very 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 difficult thing so many times your challenges start where you freeze everything put in and then the builder comes in and and you want very good exposed concrete or very good woodwork and all and then you keep struggling for it so you will learn to do that but make sure that you know you whatever you want you fight for it and you achieve it and that's what the success of being a um, good architect uh, comes in technology you have to it's the the technology is changing at such a phenomenal speed right now that um, you know you have to be uh, up to date with it you have to sort of understand it and incorporate it in in your work and it has to be a appropriate technology there is no point doing something um, i mean if you are doing something in village and all you should learn how to use mud and and make it technologically correct uh, or if you are or at the same time where there is a situation you should be able to use steel or aluminum or whatever the more 
appropriate materials and bring in that technology. And so, so you are going to have these driverless cars soon and you know, things like that, which you have to, so, so the whole way you, we think about architecture in future is going to change um, because, because everything is getting, I mean, it's something which, um, which happened during the, uh, the modernism during after industrial revolution and suddenly the way architects sort of looked at the world change now is again a situation where things are being challenged and you are trying to do something which is uh, which which would be which which would challenge you almost every day so whichever path you take it really doesn't matter don't worry about the path remember the goal as long as you set up that high goal whichever path you take it would finally reach you there and that's what is probably the most important thing for you so you know, this is a wonderful um, statement by Picasso that every child is an artist. The problem is how to remain the artist once you grow up. So today, when you are facing all these new thing, when you are when when this is the first day of your college, there's a shine in your eye in your eyes because new teachers, new environment, new subjects. So keep that shine in your eyes all the time, not only for next five years or till the rest of your life. And that's what is important to have. So, so actually idea of space is something which is very common, any, any form of art, whether it is, uh, it, whether it is a painting or a, or a music or a dance, it's the idea is you're, you're kind of defining a space in mind. So that space in mind, you have to sort of convert it into the space in reality. And that's what is your challenge now, since you have joined architecture now. And then you sort of create, bring it, bring it a form that you want to. So I'll just show you a few of our projects quickly that, uh, so this is, this is the house. So whether it's a house, this is another house, which is recently completed, or it's a hospice um, where you, you create a peaceful tranquility, you know, along with the water and, and the steps which you find in most of our Indian ghats and you know along the rivers. Uh, this is a temple, which is again a modern way of showing temple. This is a research lab. This is again a research lab. So, so using the same fundamental ideas, what I spoke to you, the expression of that changes. This is one memorial, and uh, and this is one of the office complexes which we finished recently for Titan Corporate Office. So this is how it's actually redefining the way the, the office space could be where uh, you can take your laptop and come out and sit under a tree and work. So you're almost like re redefining the way somebody would work. And especially in this pandemic situation, this turned out to be a very, very popular place because uh, it's not air conditioned space. It is, and there's, we are not circulating the same air. It is. Uh, it has evaporative cooling, and uh, you know you have these kind of amphitheaters. You can walk across the entire skin of the building, and this is how it looks like. So, um, wishing you all all the best. Um, keep doing great work uh, and work with your wonderful teachers, and keep getting inspired all the time. Um, thank you very much. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Sanjay, uh, architect Sanjay. Uh, do you guys, you can just use the chat screen for the questions and in the meantime, I get some questions. I would like to ask one question to, uh, you know, so you, uh, something that I have always wanted to ask you because I was, I, I saw a lot of your work in person as well as in video. So, you know, you, you are actually showing us this house, which is the Budhagiri house. Yes, yes. And, you know, and, and it, uh, there's actually a very interesting video, which is available on the YouTube, which I think the students can watch where you are explaining how the house, you know, the design of yeah, the house. Yeah, it was a very old one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's actually, uh, it's almost eight years old. Yeah. And uh, you're actually explaining about light also and how it energizes yes. the space and stuff yes. like that. So, uh, my question to you was this, and this is something that, you know, 
we have also you know this is something that we also teach our students at jindal school that what happens in architectural practice as well as education is that there is some sort of colonization which is happening so that colonization is that the architect or the designer actually entitles herself to be you know the forbearer of knowledge of practice of basically everything that has to do with the building and especially when it comes to ideas of aesthetics and you know ideas of beauty so you know the same way that you know colonialism was happening you know 100 150 years ago and was yeah. still happening in in the domain of knowledge in the in the domain of disciplines and learning. Uh, and learning those kind of you know uh, you know those vibrations are very much you know existing in the architectural practice as well as the way architecture is taught to students yeah. in the country where we are you know you know we are actually we are actually uh, you know prescribed that okay this is beautiful this is aesthetic this is not aesthetic uh, you know generally the students believe that you know a person does not have any idea about aesthetics and it is the professional who is supposed to tell people what is beautiful and what is not beautiful yeah. so uh, you know so uh, you know so my question would be that sir how can we ensure that we are not becoming a colonizing power in this context and you know and then the you know a uh, sort of a, an extended question would be that you know how are these formations of you know uh aesthetics and you know formations of design formations of architecture how were these formed actually in the design process and how do we ensure that we do not end up colonizing uh, knowledge and various kinds of voices which are important for the development of a project yeah actually it's a wonderful question and um, i had i had given a talk on 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 this particular subject there is one video which is there uh, but um, the thing is it's it's you sort of you are taught to learn through certain lenses of looking at it so so it talks about actually this whole belt below himalayas all uh, you know um, we we have been colonized and then we we tend to sort of look through this this lens of western lens and then try to always compare whether they like it or uh, you know uh, so but that is changing with all these youngsters that that whole idea is changing and that's the reason i showed that uh, you know sitting on the floor and eating so uh, i that challenging the idea of chair itself i mean what's 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 wrong uh what was wrong in sitting on the floor what our ancestors did all the time which was probably uh you know a hygienically probably once you fold your legs and sit um uh, act- actually it's a kind of a yogic posture so your body uh is more um, more hygienically better so so these are the certain things which we have to really look at it i would i would not look at as the um as a starting point at all i would look at it as a solving a problem first look at a functional part and um, uh and look at aesthetics is a outcome of that functionality and and that's the reason i showed that face as well where why eyes first then nose and mouth it's because of the logic not because of aesthetics so first you have to get the logic right and um if you um many many times we um personally if i look if you ask our way of working we tend to resolve plans very fast and you know because it's all functional and you know how to uh, you know work out the the larger thing but when it when you start looking at a building from outside and say that how aesthetically to make it uh, make it look good then you start struggling but if you start overlapping functions onto the onto the building like what you saw a titan building titan corporate office what i showed um of course there we had a, had a luxury of a land to to uh, you know play with but there is no facade as such it's a non building you can actually walk on the entire skin of the building or you can have vertical green green facade or things like that or uh, in some of the projects what we have done is we have taken staircases as part of the external facade so in some, in one of the schools where you see the kids running up and down as part of the facade so the activity becomes part of the of of the expression external expression so so i i i i would not 
jump to the idea of um, aesthetics because something which each of each of us tend to develop it over the years and there cannot be standard rules for it each one of each one of the student each one of us tend to sort of develop that idea over the time but uh, there are some of these things which uh, like exposed concrete you know that that's something which only the architects like and none of the non architects uh, are like i mean uh, even when i joined architecture that first year i never liked exposed concrete but by the time i was in third year i started loving it so that's how you get sort of brainwashed uh, or you get trained over the time to sort of like certain things and dislike certain things you know so so that's where i think this questioning becomes more important uh, are are we getting carried away by by some of these things or uh, um, and and that constant questioning cost constant process of unlearning becomes becomes very important okay thank you uh, we have lots of questions so uh, okay so there is one from vishnu hari kumar and the question is this that how does one go about balancing personal expression and the requirements of the client uh, i think uh, uh, a lot of this part has already been answered by you in my previous question Uh, yeah. of course you can add to it there is another question by ishita mittal uh, a student of ours in the second year she asks uh, the question is this by creating a particular space for the elements of nature aren't we trying to control the movement of nature in a design are we uh, i didn't get it uh, her question is this that by creating a particular space for the elements of nature yeah aren't we trying to control the movement of nature in a design and there is a associated question by you know it's a very similar question by tharun uh, he asks how much does working with nature differ from forcing nature to work for for us um yeah i mean these are all interesting questions the um, i always say that nature knows how to work around the architecture so uh, so you have to create a place for it uh, it might be restricted this there would be restriction you cannot compare it uh, you know being in a forest uh, because you you as a architect you have to create enclosures and those enclosures are something which which would give you that safety uh, from the nature itself the forces of nature so it's not that um, you know that famous gandhi ji statement that uh, don't don't keep uh, you know windows open so much that the whole whole house will be flown off so so you have to balance it there is always that uh, thing about uh, you know even if when you talk about incorporating water water has this uh, ability to be extremely quiet as well as extremely uh, it can it can become like a tsunami as well so you have to balance these things you 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 uh, even the light you have to know that the light comes in but not the heat comes in you have to make sure that the breeze comes in but not the not the storm you know so so there is that balancing thing so there is a restriction so you cannot uh, cannot compare it with uh, you know being in open uh, so that intervention is something as a designer you have to take those decisions how much how far and uh, uh, so it doesn't oh, doesn't become too much so so that that balancing act is something which is part of our education but when you create a space for that nature to uh, to happen um it really takes off because most of our i mean some some of the buildings i have designed are already about 25 years old and and we keep taking pictures i mean i would have that picture taken about 25 years back and then what you see now and that's where that whole um coming that quality comes in of absorption um it's about um, there's that famous statement that um why why building is called building when it is already built because because that process of building never gets completed it's always changing it's always absorbing and the people get absorbed the nature gets absorbed and it that process of aging is something which is extremely important it's not about 
you finish the building, take pictures, publish it, and it's over. It's not like that. You have to keep revisiting, keep seeing how it is absorbing activities, how it is changing, and how it is aging. So that's that's probably a most beautiful aspect of architecture. Okay. Uh, uh, Zai Malpani, who's a colleague of us and a faculty at Jindal School, says, thank you, Mr. Mohe, for a wonderful talk. Uh, you had mentioned that unlearning, which is preconceived notions, is an incredibly important and potent thing to do. Could you please speak about how you continue to do so with each project that you take on? Uh, yeah, I, I, actually, this that example I gave about uh, you know trying to define uh, define anything. Um, and that's something which you which you start doing that in every project it it becomes uh, becomes quite useful like um, like we keep doing a lot of schools and i i keep giving this example again that uh, when you when you say school um, uh, you know it's a place of learning and it's a place where you uh, the exchange of ideas exchange of knowledge now um now do you need a classroom for that for that to happen uh, but we come with this preconceived idea that there has to be a classroom when it uh, when there is a there is an idea of knowledge transfer now in uh, ravindra tagore shanti niketan uh, there are there are the people sit under the tree and learn and probably that's the best way of learning so you start with that and then you say that okay i that is my um, you know that's what i want to achieve but but there might be a rain there might be a cold there might be a hot sun so what do what do i do so i need need some kind of a shelter now can that shelter be so transparent or or so versatile that it can it can still be connected with nature um, and so you start questioning these things and then there could be a semi open space you could sit in the veranda and learn or it could be so so the notion of classroom which is a preconceived idea you have to break that and and which is already happening in some of the modern schools where uh, the classrooms are disappearing there are like series of spaces where children take their books and sit in small clusters there are bean bags there are places there where they can sleep they can take a nap get up again and there are some of these um, american international school in mumbai that has all those kind of aspects happening so things are getting re-questioned and also unless we question these basic things in every in in every aspect like even in the case of titan corporate office uh, i mean we had a extremely enlightened clients who, who really allowed us and sort of encouraged us to do this and they they themselves had this idea of let us reinvent the the, the working place where instead of these workstations why can't we why can't you ha take the laptop and sit out under a tree and work and again come back whenever required and that's how that whole space was uh, kind of reinvented and uh, just a follow up question to this by ishita who's another colleague and uh, she asked how do you ensure that the relearned after the unlearned is not just a new packaging uh, which is something of a threat even more in today's time uh I, I think the the relearning is something which which you would have those would be your ideas you are not taking something something which has been passed on to you uh, you uh, when you are re relearning it is it is your you are thinking you are questioning it it's not because somebody did it you are agreeing to it you have a chance to disagree you have a chance to to reinvent and say that because now i i know why it is done maybe you would agree to classroom or you might agree to uh, to a conventional uh, workstation but but during this process of relearning you would have understood why that has evolved what is the reason for it and by making some small change which would be your contribution um, probably you would have improved it uh, even might be maybe 0.0001% but that that matters because uh, it's not 
possible to to invent something totally new because most of the things you learn from the previous generation but whatever small step that you would have added to it becomes part of the future uh, and and that becomes very very important so so it it's it's the process of convincing yourself that what you are doing is right and uh, unless these questions are asked you will never be able to uh, you know get convinced it's it should not be because somebody else is doing you are doing it that should not happen okay thank you uh, i think we are running short of time but if you can just quickly answer this last question uh, vishnu asks that the natural environment has a tendency to grow built structures have a tendency to stagnate or disintegrate how do we build to help nature flourish and you know instead of inhibiting or destroying well i mean it needs certain amount of maintenance any any structure i mean when you see um, some of these egyptian uh, you know temples which are which have lasted for last 4000 years and they are part of the history and and uh, i had been to this abu simbel and you see these huge columns and then these columns turn around on the top these capitals and under the capital you have um, these blue color um, blue and gold color which has lasted for last 4000 years can you believe it and uh, it has it's built for the next generation for the next next not not generation generations uh, and uh, so so uh, you i mean it's not necessary that today you have to build to last for so many uh, you know probably probably you have to create spaces which can change which can transform um but but this aging that's what i was talking about you know to while while designing anything you have to understand how that building would age because uh, a painting you can store um, uh, you know uh, uh, or or even music can be stored in uh, in the form of cds and some air conditioned place but architecture has to face all the nature's uh, fury and it is all exposed you cannot cover architecture and try to preserve it it has to face the forces of nature it has to age and during that process of aging how it can how you can make it look make it beautiful uh, beautiful experience and that's what matters and always give an example of a bangalore i am done by bv doshi and probably that's one building which ages most gracefully and every time uh, we visit it it looks better and better the way the the stone is aging the way the the nature is taking over how the creepers on to the wall you know and uh, and that is what one has to learn to be able to build something which would last longer and becomes uh, you know where it's it's for people to absorb people it has to absorb activity so it has to become a habitat it has to become a place to celebrate you know life and that's what is more important it's not about abandoning the structure and uh, you know but to occupy it and then celebrate it okay uh okay thank you thank you so much uh, sir for sensitizing us once again with the you know the formations of you know of the act and the phenomena of design and you know also for highlighting the importance of unlearning which is a very critical part of the pedagogy of our school and i'm very sure that we will keep hearing from you more and we will collaborate you know for the sake of education and practice of built environment uh thank you i would now like to request professor sridhar patnayak registrar op jindal global university to give the vote of thanks and concluding remarks thank you so much uh, well what a pleasure it has been listening to uh, mr sanjay mohe the architect uh well i do not come from this particular discipline but we all connect with nature and the fundamentals and the philosophical aspects that uh sanjay mentioned uh throughout his presentation uh it truly captures the entire idea of the school of art and architecture which is admirably created by uh, professor uh, thomas michael and uh, his team of accomplished faculty members uh coming from uh, different disciplines which includes even historians artists anthropologists and lawyers and engineers we are immensely grateful to sanjay for taking out time to address uh, all of us 
Uh, in fact, I must make a very important mention over here. While uh, we take this opportunity to inaugurate the academic session and also to welcome all the new students and also the existing students who are part of the School of Art and Architecture, normally uh, this time of the year, the campus is abuzz with academic and co-curricular activities uh, and uh, students uh, getting to know their faculty and fellow classmates and thus making a new connect. Uh, but well, uh, this year we are in a COVID induced uh, situation and these are uh, special circumstances. Uh, but however, we are happy that uh, uh, we have gotten an opportunity uh, to have uh, the parents, friends and relatives uh, of our students also partake uh, in our uh, lectures and all other academic activities that we are conducting uh, virtually or in an online mode. I also take this opportunity to congratulate all the new students who joined the School of Art and Architecture. Uh, you all uh, truly uh, deserve uh, this particular recognition, uh, being a part of uh, this amazing school. And I must make a very important mention at the Jindal School of Art and Architecture. We have an enriching academic and social ecosystem uh, that will help uh, each one of you uh, develop all the essential capacities and attributes intellectually, socially, and emotionally. And I can assure you on behalf of the school that you will have an inspirational experience uh, because being at the JSAA, as it is uh, usually called or referred to, you will thrive on the continuum of art and architecture with a rich pedagogical investment pertaining to the disciplines. And such a learning and qualities are indeed important to do well in your lives and career. The other important point that I must make a mention over here, my dear students, uh, being a university student is a great responsibility. A responsibility towards your learning, a respect for the university regulations, the spaces, and even the diversity. However, it is so very enchanting to be at the JGU because the JGU uh, is a place of ideas, bonhomie, and eloquence and we take pride to mention that we take the approach of uh, student-centric uh, learning that will help you to make eloquent. Therefore, I suggest you to focus on ideating, long-term planning, and benefit from the learning opportunities we provide within the classroom and in the realm of university life and exercise your freedom and responsibility with a sense of discretion and capture, quote unquote, yeah, taking cue from uh, the lecture that I attended this morning of the Jindal School of Liberal Arts and Humanities, you need to capture the multiple narratives of university education. And then, as mentioned rightly uh, by architect Sanjay Mohe, you need to learn, unlearn, and relearn. And that's the philosophy or the mantra of learning or education. In closing, I wish to thank our commencement speaker, for his great remarks once again, and all the faculty members uh, of the Jindal School of Art and Architecture, led by the Dean of JSA, for curating and putting together uh, this very uh, interesting and wonderful program. I must also make a mention that programs of this nature, they're a collective effort, and it is difficult to take all the names, but I would like to sincerely thank uh, the Office of Admissions and Outreach the school office, and most importantly, the fulcrum for these activities, the Office of Information Technology Services and the Communications Office and the support, leadership and coordination rendered by members of the Office of the Registrar and the Office of the Vice Chancellor. I would also like to thank all the students and the parents uh, who attended this uh, particular lecture and for their active participation. To conclude, I would like to say best wishes to each one of you on a successful start of the academic year. And being at JGU is a transformation bridge. So I request and I appeal to each one of you to please make the most of it. Thank you once again. The program has now ended. Thank you, Professor Thank you, Thank, thank, you, thank, you, your... thank you for uh, conducting it so well. Thank you, Thank you. Uh, Jaydeep, sir.
Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Yeah, with this, I would just like to conclude this year's commencement lecture. And a big thank you to everybody who worked to make it happen. And thank you all the participant attendees. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Goodbye. Thank you, Abu. Thank you, Sanjay, so much. And thank, thank you, Sridhar. Thank, thank you all. Thank you. Goodbye. Okay. Bye.